This is The Close-Up, conversations about creativity. From our studios in Los Angeles, here is Jim Chapin. Welcome to The Close-Up. Bob Whitehill is the stereoscopic supervisor for Pixar Animation Studios. During his time there, he has worked on a steady stream of critical and financial hits, including Monsters, Inc., Toy Story 3, Up, Cars, and of course, this summer's big box office hit, Inside Out. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Here's what the New York Times said about Inside Out. It said, Inside Out ranks among Pixar's grandest visual triumphs. Funny and charming, fast moving, and full of surprises. The youngest viewers will have a blast, while those older than Riley are likely to find themselves in tears, not of grief, but of gratitude and recognition. Sadness, it turns out, is not Joy's rival, but her partner. Our ability to feel sad is what stirs compassion in others and empathy in ourselves. There is no growth without loss and no art without loving. Uh, what is it about this movie that elicits uh, such a strong uh, reaction from the critics and, and the fans? Well, I think we can all relate to sadness and to the feeling of being at a loss and not feeling our best and wondering why do we feel that way. And here is a film that recognizes that it's a natural part of human nature. It's um, something that we can't avoid, and yet it's something that we should cherish and recognize that it brings community together, people together, and people to our aid if we need them. Uh, directed by Pete Docter. When did he come into the story? When did the story begin? Tell us the story of the story. Yeah, it's a fun, fun story. So you may remember Up, Pete Docter's the movie before this that he directed. And at the beginning, there's this wonderfully charming young girl. You know, adventure is out there, and her name is Ellie. Well, it turns out that's Pete Doctor's daughter, who's also named Ellie, doing the voice of that young character. And she was so charming and vivacious and full of life um, that she really captured the spirit of that young character in the movie. And then years later, um, she began to go into adolescence. And Pete saw her become a little more withdrawn and a little sadder. And so the genesis of the idea for Inside Out is what happened to Ellie? What's going on inside of her head? And so he did a lot of research, and the Pixar team did a lot of research with psychologists and psychiatrists to figure out what goes on when an adolescent brain is developing. And that's basically the genesis for the idea of Inside Out. How long do you work on a story at Pixar before you start production? Um, it can depend. Um, I know that some films have taken up to six years before we've brought on hundreds of people to do the actual production. Um, Inside Out took six years overall, and so until there was a big team working on it, it was about four years of developing the story. And how many people are, work on a movie like Inside Out from beginning to end? I think the, the crew is probably around 400 strong. Um, and so there'll be a smaller crew at first through the, through the story setting period, doing the storyboards and, and an editing crew putting it all together. But by the time we're getting into actual animation and layout and lighting and effects, there are, there's a crew of, of many hundred people working on it. You lead the uh, 3D team at Pixar. Uh, what were the decisions and the discussions uh, and the debates in how and where to use 3D in the movie? Yes. we. Um, so we had this unique environment called headquarters, and this is sort of the control center for Riley's brain, and it's where these emotions live. And, and up in headquarters is a large screen through which Riley sees the world as it unfolds before her. Also on that screen, we're seeing her memories played back. Also on that screen, we're seeing her dreams as she sleeps. And so this was a very central window into the world. Um, and as the stereoscopic supervisor, I, of course, felt like we had to do that in 3D. So we could experience Riley's walking through school, for instance, in stereo space on that screen or, or remembering some of her memories um, in 3D. Um, the challenge was we had a lot of raking angles and different sort of views of that screen while we were in headquarters. And that presented problems because um, we weren't quite sure how the 3D would react to different camera angles glancing across the, uh, the 3D screen and so forth. It's a bit like, imagine shooting a 3D movie inside a movie theater, on, which is playing a 3D movie as you're shooting your movie. Um, and so we had to make some very careful decisions about how that screen would look from all the different angles that we were shooting within headquarters. 
and it turns out to be very successful. Um, there was hesitance about doing it because of this angle problem, and so we selected a scene where Joy, in Joy's, um, Riley's emotion in headquarters is actually ice skating with Riley on screen in a memory of Riley back in Minnesota on her favorite lake. Um, and that was such a beautiful moment to see in 3D space Joy ice skating with Riley on the screen and it felt like they were in the same space and really related to one another because it was in 3D, that that was the final selling point that yes, let's push ahead and make sure that every element on that screen is also in, in stereo or in 3D. The, the screening I saw was a, with a lot of families and the parents were laughing as often and as loudly as the kids. What is it about a Pixar movie where you're able to really entertain two very distinct demographics in that movie theater at the same time, all of them leaving with a joyful feeling, 98% uh, Rotten Tomatoes approval. Th these movies have an ability to do something that not many animated movies do. What is it? Thank you, Jim. I, I think it comes down to our directors and our creative leads really making films that they want to see. And so they're essentially making movies for themselves as adults. And they just have you know, big hearts and humor that, that sort of appeals to children. Um, it's, it's not like we're making children's movies and hoping the adults will come. I think we're making movies for ourselves and our own sense of humor and our own sense of heart and storytelling. And, and that just happens to result in these wonderful all-ages experiences. The cast includes Amy Poehler, Bill Hader, Louis Black, Kyle MacLachlan, John Ratzenberger. Uh, when do you bring the, the actors in to do the uh, voice recording? Really pretty early in the process. We'll oftentimes do a very preliminary storyboard pass with internal voices just to get some pacing going and see how the film is playing. But shortly after that, we want to cast our final voices and get them in because all of the animation that follows is cued off of their performance. Um, you know, every gesture, every movement um, is going to be based on how they delivered the line, at what speed they delivered the line, when they delivered the line. So it's very important that we get those, that talent in early so that so we can So your animators are watching that, uh, that material uh, to make those characters um, all the more realistic. Very much so. So the director and, and editorial mm -hmm. staff will comb through every possible delivered take and make choices and sometimes we'll be you know s splicing in um, different words from different takes to make the sentence that is just exactly perfect and then that will go to the animators and they will react to that. This movie has Oscar buzz already. Uh, I think it'll be uh, a surprise to no one if it's nominated for best picture. Um, what is a creative process where John Lasseter and Pete Docter and the team are all coming together to discuss something? What kinds of things are they discussing when they gather? I think um, you know, in those, they're called brain trust sessions. And so they'll have um, screenings in storyboard form of the movies at the very beginning and then start putting in actual animation as it goes along. And then they'll collect together after a screening and, and talk it through. And I think the notes can range from you know, really big picture ideas about um, whether, I remember one of the first passes of Inside Out, for instance, had joy and fear being the emotions that were sort of cast out of headquarters and had to have the adventure to get back to headquarters. And so a note came up in the brain trust session that although fear is very funny and we love that interplay between he and Joy, it's really the fact that sadness goes with Joy and travels and we learn the real meaning of sadness and what sadness, how sadness plays an important part of all, in all of our lives. That's the true story. And so the brain trust can make you know bigger decisions like that about which characters go where and how a story unfolds. And then I think they can make very microscopic sort of decisions about whether a joke is landing and maybe you know, give some notes about just changing the word choice of a certain line to make it more impactful. So it's a, it's a really important part of our filmmaking. I, I think what's interesting about it is that um, hundreds of us work on these movies you know, and dozens are involved in the story decisions and I think it's really that collaborative team effort that gets us to our best product at the end. Um, our directors in some ways have to work as as editors and that they're being thrown all these ideas from all these different departments. The lighters might have certain ideas, people in camera and staging, the animators certainly, um, the, all the editorial staff is always in, impacting the movie um, and so our directors have to be very capable of 
taking all this input in and choosing what really helps make the movie better. Um, and so I think the brain trust is just that in a very powerful, intense session that follows one of these screenings. I've heard about this movie from quite a few parents, many of my family who've said, take your kids and see this movie. It really is an eye-opener for children and parents alike about the different emotions a child is going through as they grow up. So uh, I think there's a real sense of gratitude. Uh, in the meantime, to you and John Lasseter and Pete Doctor, I think you're leaving audiences joyful. We'll look forward to seeing The Good Dinosaur, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure. The Close-Up is produced by the Advanced Imaging Society in Hollywood and powered by Barcode.